The question is, the condition for a body having density rho b to float completely immersed in the liquid having density rho l is. And what do we see? We have to find the relationship between both the densities. Okay. So what is the situation? There is a body whose density is rho b and there's a liquid whose density is rho l. And we have to find the condition where the body is completely immersed in the liquid and it is floating. All right. If we look at the free body diagram, the weight of the object is going to act downwards. And what is going to make it float? The buoyant force, which the liquid is applying on the body is going to keep it floating. Now, Archimedes principle tells me that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. Okay. So if I have to write this in an equation, I will have to write it as mg is equal to the buoyant force because that's what the free body diagram tells me. And that should be equal to weight of the liquid displaced. Since I want relationship between density, so I'll have to convert all of this in terms of density. Okay, so the mass of the body, I'm going to write it as the volume of the body into the density of the body. This gives me the mass multiplied by G gives me the weight. Okay, now weight of the liquid displaced. Now notice that this body is completely immersed. If it is completely immersed, how much is the volume it is going to displace? It is going to displace exactly equal to its own volume. Okay, so the volume of liquid displaced would be the volume of the body itself multiplied by the density of the liquid because we are trying to find out the mass of the liquid displaced and multiplied by gravity is going to give me the weight. Okay, what do we see? VB gets cancelled, G gets cancelled and I have rho B is equal to rho L. Alright, so that is the condition where it is going to be floating but completely immersed. Now it is not difficult to see that when the body is partially submerged in the liquid then rho B has to be equal to less than rho L and when the body sinks then rho B has to be greater than rho L and this is are the, these are the conditions that we should always remember. All right, now let's have a look at the options. So obviously option C in this case is going to be my right answer. A metallic sphere floats in an immiscible mixture of water and a liquid such that it's fourth fifth volume is in water and one fifth volume is in the liquid. The density of the metal is all right. So we have two immiscible liquids. One is water, one is another liquid. We have their densities and this object is four fifth immersed in water. So I can say that four fifth of the volume is immersed in water. And for this liquid, the one fifth volume is going to be immersed in this liquid and it is an equilibrium. We have to find out what is the density of this solid. Perfect. So it is floating. What does it mean? It means that the weight is going to be balanced by the buoyant force. And what is buoyant force? Buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. Okay. So what is the weight of water displaced? It is going to be the volume of water displaced, which is four fifth of the volume of the solid multiplied by the density of water multiplied by the gravity. This is the weight of the water displaced. Now, what is the weight of the liquid displaced? The volume, which is one fifth of the volume of the solid multiplied by the density of the liquid multiplied by G. All right, perfect. So this is the weight of the liquid displaced or the buoyant force that will be acting on it. Okay. It is going to support the weight of this object. So what will be the weight of the object? The weight of the object is going to be density of the body multiplied its volume, which is V. That's what we have assumed multiplied by gravity. Simple. So if I do the calculation, what do I get? V gets cancelled from both sides. G gets cancelled from both sides. So this equation tells me that rho B, the density of the body is going to be rho L divided by five plus rho water multiplied by four by five. Okay. Now let's do the substitution. So this is 13.5 into 10 to the power three divided by five plus what do I have? I have rho water, which is 10 to the power three into four divided by five. Okay. Now let's do the calculation. So five is in the denominator. So it will become, so in the numerator, I'm going to get 17.5 and then in the denominator five and then multiplied by 10 to the power three. 
okay what i can do is i can calculate this so this becomes 5 into 3 15 so 3.5 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 and finally the answer is going to come out to be 3.5 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube and that is going to be my answer all right let's look at the options so option a is going to be the correct option a cubical block of ice floating in water has to support a metal piece of mass 0.5 kg if specific gravity of ice is 0.9 then minimum edge length of the block so that it does not sink in water is so we have a nice block and it is floating in water but it has to support a metal piece of mass 0.5 kg so from the free void diagram we can see that the net force acting downwards is going to be 0.5 g which is the weight of the metal plus mg which will be the weight of ice i have assumed the mass of ice to be small m now why is it not sinking because there is an upward buoyant force acting we know that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. So if the volume of the cube is small, then only a small amount of liquid is going to be displaced and hence the buoyant force is going to be less. That might not be sufficient to support the total weight acting downwards. Hence, the cube has to have a minimum volume which can displace enough liquid so that adequate amount of buoyant force can act. Okay, so in this condition, the maximum buoyant force is going to act when the ice block is completely immersed. Okay, so if in this condition the ice block can support the metal block, then any volume greater than this, the ice block will be able to support the block. Okay, so in this condition, if we have to write the equilibrium equation, this is how that is going to be. So the total weight acting downwards is going to be 0.5 g plus mg. This has to be equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. Okay, let's say that this ice cube has an edge length L. So what will be the volume of the ice cube? It is going to be L cube and that same L cube is going to be the volume of the water displaced. Now mass of the water displaced is going to be L cube into the density of water and the weight will be by multiplying it by G. Okay. So here I see G gets cancelled from all sides and I see that 0 0.5 plus M. So mass of ice, can I write it as the volume of ice, which is rho cube, L cube, multiplied by the density of ice. This is equal to L cube into density of water. Is that correct? All right. What we need is L cube. So I can take this to the right hand side. I'm going to get 0 0.5 is equal to L cube into density of water minus density of ice. Now this is going to be 0 0.5 is equal to L cube multiplied by the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube minus density of ice is going to be 900 kg per meter cube because its specific gravity is 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 into density of water is going to give me the density of ice. So this becomes 900 kg per meter cube and I am left with L cube is equal to 0 0.5 upon 100. Okay, I can also write it as 1 upon 200 and hence L will be equal to 1 upon 200 to the power 1 upon 3 and this answer I am going to get in SI units which is meter. So that is going to be my answer and the correct option for this question is going to be option A. A barometer kept in an elevator reads 76 centimeter of mercury when the elevator is at rest. If the elevator goes upwards with some acceleration, the reading of the barometer will be, will it be 76 centimeter, greater than that, less than that or zero. Okay. So the elevator is accelerating and hence the barometer is also accelerating. Now, in the initial condition, when I'm assuming it to be at rest, so how does a barometer measure the atmospheric pressure? So, we know that there is vacuum over here. So, this point is exposed to the atmosphere. So, the pressure here is P0 and in a stationary liquid, at the same point, the pressure is the same. So, the pressure here is also same and that pressure is due to the column of mercury, let's say height h. So can we say P0 is going to be rho g h? Absolutely. And that's exactly how we measure the atmospheric pressure. 
okay but now the things have changed now this entire setup is moving upward with an acceleration a okay now what will be the pressure at this point Notice that this point is not inside the liquid. So the liquid cannot apply any pressure. It is still exposed to the atmosphere. There's only layers of atmosphere above it. Hence, the pressure at this point will still be P0. Okay. Also, when a liquid accelerates, the pressure changes if we move along the direction of acceleration. Now here, the direction of acceleration is upwards. So if we move up or down, then the pressure is going to vary. But if we are at the same level, the pressure is still going to be the same. So the pressure here is also going to be P0. Okay. Now there is a vacuum over here. So if we consider the acceleration of this column of mercury, which now probably might have a new height. We don't know. Let's assume that H prime. Now this is going to be accelerated under the forces acting due to this pressure and the weight of this mercury column acting downwards okay so can we write the equation of f equal to ma for this perfect let's assume that the area of cross section is a so the force acting upwards is going to be p naught times say pressure into area what will be the weight acting downwards the weight acting downwards would be the volume of the liquid which is h prime into a multiplied by the density of the liquid multiplied by g so this is the weight acting downwards. This has to be equal to the mass, which is going to be the volume multiplied by density into the acceleration. Okay. So P naught we know is rho G H. And first of all, A gets cancelled from all sides. So P naught, I can substitute it as rho G H. And this will be equal to rho into H prime into G plus A. Okay. I also see that rho gets cancelled. So finally, H prime comes out to be G upon G plus A multiplied by H. Okay. So G upon G plus H is going to be a quantity less than 1. Hence, H prime is going to be less than H. Okay. Since H was 76 centimeter, my answer is going to be less than 76 centimeter. Now let's have a look at the options. So naturally, option C is going to be the a right answer. A cylindrical block of wood of mass 2 kg and radius 7 cm is floating in water with its axis vertical. It is depressed by a distance x and the net force on it is given by f is equal to kx Then the value of k in newton per meter is. Alright, so we have a block of wood which is floating in water with let's say length t submerged. Now it is pushed by a further distance x. So now the total distance submerged is going to be t plus x. And in this situation, we want to find out what will be the net force so that it can be compared to f is equal to kx. And hence, we can find out what is k. That is the question. Okay. So in the initial condition, the weight of the wood acting downwards would be supported by the buoyant force acting upwards. Okay. Let's say the area of cross section of this piece of wood is A. So I'm going to write the equilibrium equation in the initial condition and that is going to be mg is equal to the buoyant force. How much is going to be the buoyant force? The weight of the liquid displaced. What is the volume submerged? The volume submerged is T multiplied by A, the length multiplied by area of cross section. This will be the volume of liquid displaced multiplied by the density of water will give me mass into gravity is going to give me weight okay so this is the initial condition now a distance t plus x is submerged okay so what will be the net force acting we know that f prime b okay the new buoyant force is going to become greater because now a larger amount of volume is submerged okay so we can say that the net force is going to become f prime b minus mg okay what can we write about f prime b now what is the volume submerged the volume submerged is t plus x multiplied by area that is the volume multiplied by density of water gives me the mass of liquid displaced into gravity gives me the weight minus mg all right, this is equation two. Now what I can do is I can substitute mg 
and put it in equation 2. Okay, so the net force will come out to be T plus X into A into rho water into G minus Mg is given by T into A into rho water into G. Okay, now let's expand this and see what happens. So this becomes X A rho water into G plus T A rho water into G minus T A rho water into G and we see that these two terms get cancelled. So F is equal to A rho water into G into X and we have to compare it to F is equal to Kx. Hence, what is the value of K? The value of K is A rho W into G. So what is A? A is going to be pi into R square which is 7 centimeter square. So this is going to become 49 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square density of water is 10 to the power 3 and gravity is 10 okay so this 10 to the power 4 and 10 to the power 4 gone what am i left with i'm left with 3.14 into 49 since this is numerical based question so i have to find out the exact answer so 9 4 36 3 then i have 12 1 and then 27 28 and then i'll have 4 4 16 1 5 and 12. So this is going to come out to be 6, 8, 3, 5, 1. Okay, and two decimal places. So the exact answer comes out to be 153.86, but obviously we can approximate that to 154 Newton per meter. And that is going to be my answer. Okay, so this was the input that was required in this question.